praise the Lord. Finally, everybody. Amen. So first off, let me say my apologies for the technical difficulties. Uh, we have had a challenging time the last 10 minutes. So if you have held on for these 10 minutes, surely you must be in the loop with all of our announcements by, uh, by now. So I think they've probably passed before you a couple dozen times. So we are sorry. Amen. But we're here and we're thankful to be here and we'll do our best to expedite this to still be out uh, at the same time. Amen. Uh, let's go before the Lord in prayer. I think that would be uh, just a fantastic idea. And uh, I know there are some families in our church that are still struggling and needing God to touch them. Uh, several of us need encouragement, strength, direction, and uh, guidance during these times. I know there are still some uh, some of us looking for opportunities for employment, so on and so forth. So, amen. I am thankful that he owns the cattle on a thousand hill, that he is able to do exceeding abundantly above. Uh, these are qualities that our Lord has, and we are very thankful to him for these things. Amen. So if you will close your eyes with me, we will be begin this service off uh, asking the Lord to bless it in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you, God, for the people that belong in this community called the church today. I'm asking that you will have your divine favor on their life. Touch them. Move on their behalf. I pray, God, that you will set free what needs to be set free. God, that you will bind what needs to be bound. We ask these things in a name that we have complete confidence in and we trust. We worship your precious name. We love you, we honor you, and in that great name, we ask these things in Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Uh, first off, let me um, thank you for remaining faithful to the Wednesday night midweek services. I know this is a challenge. It's a challenge for me as well. Um, I believe this is year 33 or 34 in assembling together. Uh, the majority of uh, my early life was two services on Sunday, and then we had prayer meeting as well as a midweek service, and that did not count when we got into the student ministry, so on and so forth. So a lot of, a lot of times, four or five times a week, and maybe even more. And so once a week is very unique for us. Um, as apostolics, we are used to assembling together. And so how to remain faithful how to remain connected is somewhat a challenge to some of us. And because we love being together, and I know I love when you are here uh, much more than I do when I'm speaking to an empty room. And so, uh, but you are staying faithful and you're staying connected. And so I appreciate that and I honor you for doing so. Um, in light of that, we're going to spend um, the next at least the next month, uh, being online midweek only. And uh, that is obviously in light of the recent changes that the city of Tulsa has undergone. And uh, it's just uh, a little easier for us to navigate uh, from a Bible study setting at home in the comforts of our house or wherever we may be, as opposed to uh, coming together, wearing of the masks, making sure that A and B happen, kids seated. Uh, it's just, it uh, just seems like it's a lot easier to do it this way. So uh, in light of that, we will still continue as long as we can to have Sunday services at 10 a.m. And um, I love it. Um, I, I hate the fact that I'm mandated in certain ways, but I love it. I love being together and it's worth it to me to be with each and every one of you, no matter what the challenges are. So please continue 10 a.m. Sunday morning. We will meet back here uh, at the church today at our physical location and then midweeks for the next, at least the next month. And we'll see how it uh, happens when school starts up and uh, what the nature of um, our culture looks like at that time. Amen. So uh, last week, we did start off a series that we entitled Follow, and uh, this is a very important series. 
I, I felt it in the Holy Ghost that uh, the Lord is, is creating for us an invitation to share this road with Him. And we'll get into some of that in just a second. We talked about uh, the necessity last week. We, uh, we had a, a very direct, and I felt like it was very spirit-filled, closing to the service. And the Lord is wanting us to understand how uh, necessary it is for us to become accustomed and comfortable with carrying the cross. And we have to do that. This road is challenging. This road is difficult. And uh, I have a feeling that uh, in the natural, it's not going to become any easier. It's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to become uh, you, you know, more challenging, more difficult. The climb is going to be steadily in the direction of an uphill battle. And that's the way it seems like this is going to be. And the church has to be uh, ready. We have to be yoked with him in these final hours. And I felt like uh, a couple weeks back that the Lord was leading me to talk to this great congregation about the necessity to truly be yoked with him. And so we are going through the concept of following him. I'm going to take your attention, if you'll allow me, to mark the first chapter and the 17th verse. It states, follow me, and I will make you to become. One of the translations says, come, and I will make you to become. If you will come after me, is what he is saying, I have an end game. I have an end goal for your life. This is not just an invitation to come and follow him. This is an invitation for transformation. That's the first key. Ladies and gentlemen, this is an invitation for transformation. And I believe that the Lord wants us to be transformed. This invitation is not just about change. I'm going to say that one more time. It's about transformation, not change. And there is a vast difference between transformation or being changed. Let me give you a couple of definitions here. Let some of these settle into your spirit. To be changed is, um, or to be changed uses rather external influences, things from the outside to modify my actions. And so if I were to look into dietary, um, uh, you know, a dietary uh, transformation or a dietary change, uh, we'll use that as an example, okay? So for instance, and I, I want to go on a diet. I want to change my behavior. I want to change my lifestyle. I, I want to, uh, you know, I'm going to lose weight or whatever. I have a goal set uh, for X amount of pounds, um, uh, you know, in X amount of days or, or whatever the case may be. Well, I can go on a diet and I can change my diet and I can reach that. I can reach that goal by changing my diet. I can cut the carbs out. I, I can increase the fat a little bit. I can do more uh, protein. Um, I, I, I can, uh, you know, I can stay away from, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the liquids or whatever that's going to cause me to gain weight. I can adjust the time that I eat. I don't have to eat at 10 o'clock at night. Um, and if I, if I do, if my work schedule, I can uh, balance what I eat, when I eat, and how I, so whatever. So you can change some external factors uh, in your life or external influences, and it, and it can modify our actions. And so at the end of that period of time, there is a probability, unless there is a medical condition, there's a probability that if I give myself time and I change external factors or influences that I am able now to modify my actions in such a way that I can lose that weight. But after that weight, if I have not truly given myself over, all right, I can still want the carbs. I can still want to eat late. I can still want and after that time is up, a lot of times we slip back into a, uh, a, a terrible pattern and the, uh, the door is just revolving. It's just one, it's, 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 it's in and out. It's in and out, it's in and out, it's in and out. Now, now I've changed some things and I've reached a goal, but if I don't have transformation in my life, so what does that mean? So if we're looking still at dietary, then, then transformation would be that I'm getting beyond even wanting that. It's not just about shifting. 
these external factors to modify. No, it's about now I no longer want the carbs. I want the protein. Now I am, uh, I, I don't desire, uh, you know, a, a two liter of Dr. Pepper today, but rather I am, uh, you know, I'm, I, I can't get enough of that gallon of water that I drink every day or whatever the case may be. And so uh, transformation is not just about external influences, but rather it's about modifying our belief system. It's not just about, uh, you know, actions. It's about beliefs. And now I start shifting, and I, I, don't, I, I don't look for these external things. No, 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 I, I, it's something altogether different than that. Change modifies behaviors. Transformation modifies values and desires. Let me say it one more time. Jesus calls us not to change. Jesus calls us to transform us. He doesn't just call us to change our external uh, influences or our behaviors, he calls us to transform us so that we can have our desires and our values modified. He is looking for something deeper. Let's stop right there. Let's, let's um, look into the writing of Paul. This is what Paul said in Romans chapter 12. He said, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. He says that after he tells us not to be conformed to the world. So the first thing I want you to do is I want you to not be conformed to the world. But through transformation, you will be able, through transformation. So if you just change, we may have a, a period of time where we can make a difference, but the drawing factor is still there. The desire is still there. And if I'm reading his word right, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature Old things are passed away, and behold, all things become new. It's about transformation. We don't just want to come and follow him so that he can change our actions. We follow him so we can have a transformation of our values and of our desires. And I want my desires to be his desires. And in this last hour, I can feel this in the Holy Ghost right now. But in this last hour, we are going to have to not just have uh, superficial changes made. We are going to have to have internal belief systems that are completely modified by, as, the, uh, as Paul stated in Romans to the church, we have got to have it through the renewing of our mind. We've got to have a mind renewal through transformation. So we cannot just have modified behaviors, but rather we have to have modified values and belief systems or desires. Uh, Colossians, let's look at Colossians chapter 3 verse 5. Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature. That sounds like there has to be an old thing passing away and an adjustment to a new thing. And I have seen and I have experienced and there's been times in my life where I can echo what Paul said. I, I do the things that I don't want to do. I don't do the things that I should be doing. And, and it doesn't sound much like transformation. I, I get it. There's a, there's a process here. There's a, uh, there's a growth here. There's a maturing here. And that's why we have to come back to what Jesus said to the disciples. Because he's calling us to follow him. And in this last day and hour, we better be following him. We're going to have to be following him. We're going to have to follow the light. We're going to have to follow the truth. We're going to have to stay on the way uh, because everything is going to get tighter and tighter and tighter. And it's going to keep squeezing in on our faith. It's going to keep squeezing in on our attention. It's going to keep squeezing in on our lives, our marriages, on our jobs. And we're going to have to follow him. And we'll talk about what that looks like as we keep going through this series. But I felt like in the Holy Ghost, it was so pivotal for me to say that we cannot just uh, seek the Lord for changes. We have got to seek Him for transformation. Amen. But put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature. What? Put to death. That sounds to me like there has got to be a metamorphosis process. Old is no longer there. New, I am embracing for the future. We can look into the pages of the Old Testament. We find 
uh, a very powerful verse. Uh, Joel uh, tells the, uh, the, uh, the, the nation at this time in uh, the second chapter in the 13th verse. This is what he says. Rend your heart, not your garments. Don't just rend your garments and to show me putting ashes upon. No, let there be a tearing away at the heart. David, when he spoke in the 51st Psalm, when he had committed that grave or those grave sins, and that that just basically weighed down, I was going to say bared down, but weighed down on his conscience for over a year. Finally, he is able to uh, he is able to lay before the Lord and to literally, it's out in the open now. Judgment is going to be cast now. And, and David laments with godly sorrow when he says, Have mercy upon me, O God, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. And he would go on to ask God not only to cleanse him, but he would, he would ask him to to allow him to rejoice in the broken bones. He would ask God to create. I need you to create in me a clean heart. Rend my heart. Not, I don't want a superficial. I don't want something that's just on the surface. I need you to rend my heart. Create in me a clean heart. And some of us may need a creative miracle in these final hours. We are, we are so bogged down. So bogged down. We need something more than a superficial uh, prayer session. We need something more than just a superficial uh, experience with God. We don't, we don't need to rend uh, the, the garments, if you were. We need to step into a place where, where our hearts are, are, are literally torn for the things that God has for us. These final moments of history, or, or, yeah, these final moments in history, rather, that's probably a better way to put it. We're going to have to follow closer and closer and closer to Him. we got to get to where now we are, we are not just in the wake of Christ, but rather we are crucified with Him. Now, I don't want to be following at such a distance. I want to be close to Him. I want to take that Matthew principle where He tells me to come and, 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 uh, and, and to be yoked together with Him. I desire to take that yoke upon me and put that burden on me. Come on, church. We, we've we've got we've to do away with just the slight adjustments and allow him to make the cuts that he needs to make. We need to focus on what we are called to focus on. In prayer today, I felt the Holy Ghost speak to me, and I felt like the Lord was telling me that we have to adjust uh, our, our focus in such a way. Now, you've got to hear it. I felt like the Lord said, tell my people that, that I, him, I have to be the object of their affection. That I will not share that spot with anybody. And I feel like that God is not going to share that with anything or anyone. He must be the object of our affection. And in this last day, we're going to have to set our uh, uh, affections on him, our mind on him in such a fashion, and in such a way that nothing or no one can take that, take that place. There's going to be so many things that come against the church in the last day. I do not feel like you can defeat something that is undefeatable. The gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. It's not possible to defeat something that God is building. And so the enemy knows that he is not going to defeat the church. And so rather than try to to break the foundation, that it would be impossible, he'll distract her. He will distract the bride in the last day. So we cannot just afford to have changes that modify our behaviors, but rather there's got to be transformation that modifies our desires. I've got to want him as the center of my being. I've got to want him. Not just to be changed. I think, uh, maybe it's here, yeah. Matthew 19, the, the rich young ruler says, All these things have I kept from my youth. What do I still lack? What, 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 what is it that, that I haven't done yet? And here's what Jesus says to him. If you want to be perfect, go and sell what you have and give to the poor. It's not about the poor. Jesus would talk about the poor. They will always be here. 
There will always be a need. It's not about the money going to the poor, but rather getting it out of your possession. And I need you to get it out of your possession. So give it to a noble cause. It's not about the poor. It's about you. It's not about where you're giving. It's the fact that I need you to get rid of it. You see what we're saying here? And you have or you will have treasure in heaven. So let's make an exchange here. Let's, let's make an adjustment here. I need you to get rid of that which is, is bogging you down. I need you to, 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 to get rid of. And here's the problem. Here's the problem. Is that this young ruler was willing to change. What do I lack? But he was not willing to be transformed. Go, sell, give, come, follow me. He wasn't willing for transformation because when Jesus said those things, go, sell, give, come, and follow me, those five things, it caused this man to step back and say, he's not the object of my affection. That's not the object of my affection. I can't get rid of that which I have. And I feel the Holy Ghost even telling this church, we're going to have to make some adjustments in these last hours. We're going to have to make some adjustments in these final days. The Lord is going to require us. He's going to require me and he's going to require you. He's going to, he's going to set things before us and we're going, to have to, we're going to have to choose who are we, we are willing to serve and what we're willing to give and how much we are really willing to follow him. I want to become what he wants me to become, but I realize it's a process where calling has to embrace commitment. I'm going to have to embrace it. My my. Uh, my commitments are going to be in question in these final hours, in these final days. What I am really committed to. God has put a calling on His church, on His people, on you, on me. And He's called us. He's separated us. He's given us an opportunity. But but uh, this calling, rather, these callings, yours and mine, we're going to have to embrace the commitment that's ahead. You come. And I will make you to become. But you've got to, I, I put a calling, but you've got to take a step. You've, you've got to come a, alongside me. And there's going to be moments in this. And I feel it right now. The Spirit is just reaching right through uh, this online uh, service into your living rooms. And He's trying to stir you. And, and I've, I feel like I'm echoing what the Spirit has been saying to the church is I've called you into this last hour. I've called you to be my bride. I've called you to be my church. I've called you to be my hands. I've called you to be my feet. I've called you to the Great Commission. I've called you to the field. And I, I've, I've given you wisdom. I've given you authority. I've given you power. I've given you the opportunity for miracle signs and wonders. I've given you, uh, I, I've given you my word that you are able to stand upon. And in these last days, the calling of God... And what he has given to his church is going to have to embrace the commitment. No matter what comes in from the outside, what challenges, no matter if our spouses, if our children, no matter if our parents embrace this, we are going to have to embrace it. We're going to have to embrace it. Come, and I will make you to become. I need you to rend your heart right now, not just your garment. If you'll follow me, if you'll come after me, I will make you to become. Oftentimes, right here, you'll see that the term follow, when he invites us to follow, what he's literally doing is inviting us to share the same road. Follow me. Share the same road with me. Get on the same road that I'm on. I don't know if there's a better place in the Word of God that really begins to dictate somebody taking these words to heart than when Peter said, if it's really you, bid me to come. I want to, I want to be where you are. I want, to, I, I want to step out of this boat, and I want to walk on that water, and I, 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 want, to, I, I want to share the same road as you. And Jesus simply says, he doesn't explain it, he doesn't try to, uh, to tell him how to manipulate it. He doesn't give him a five-step process. And I, th- I feel like sometimes we want this calling uh, to follow him to come with an ex- instruction manual. And, and, and if you'll allow me, if you'll give me the three steps ahead, and I can look ahead and say, oh, okay, that's how it's going to work out, then I'll start building. And that's not the way that the Lord works. 
The Lord simply said, come on. He simply was saying, step out of the boat. And, and I'm not going to explain how I'm doing this, Peter. I'm not going to explain the process. I'm simply giving you the invitation. And Peter said, I want to be there. I want to go where you are. And the Bible says to go to Jesus. That's why he went where he, where he went, and that's why he did what he did. And when he stepped out of the boat, he was sharing the same road. And if we'll get to that place, if we'll get into that position, and if we'll walk that, that same path, uh, that same road, we'll see the things that we've been desiring. But we're going to have to yoke ourselves with him. We can't have superficial changes. We can't just uh, behavior modifications. No, there's going to be some belief systems that are really transformed inside of some of us. We're going to start be- believing differently. That if I step out, well, the facts say it doesn't make a difference. My belief system is there. You see what I'm saying? Follow to share the same Road. He's calling us into a position, and I'll, I'll stop. We were a few minutes late, I guess more than a few minutes late. Um, but I'll stop right here, and we'll, we'll take it up again um, here in a few weeks. But it, we, we need to understand something. We can't just follow after Christ. Some of us will just follow after Christ, but we won't be found at Calvary. And I'll end here where I ended last week. We've got to deny, take up our cross, and follow Him. We can't just be willing to follow the Christ when the miracles are there. We've got the palm branches in our hand. Uh, we're, 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 we're seeing the, the, the Christ coming into our lives or our situations. Or we'll follow him when the miracles are there, when the finances are there. We'll follow him when, uh, when everything's right and temptations aren't at its greatest. We'll follow him when it's not a certain season or, or whatever, whatever the case may be. And not be found at the cross not be found at, at, at a Calvary, not be found with the cross in our hands. And, and I said it last week, we've got to let go of some things so we can steady our cross. And we better be willing because these hours and this day and this moment is going gonna, is gonna to demand from us. And we're coming in with masks on. I'm just getting real online here. But we're coming in with masks on and, or, or we're not coming to church because we have to wear masks or whatever. We have we better understand that if, if we're going to love a Christ, we better love a Calvary. You can't love Christ without loving the cross. You can't serve Christ without carrying a cross. It's impossible. If we're going to share the same road and we're really going to follow him, we better learn how to carry our cross. We better learn how uh, to, to adjust the weight of, Calv- or of our own personal cross. And we better be able to carry that to the places that he demands us to carry it. We cannot follow Christ and not be found at Calvary. We must realize that Christ has a cross and following him has a cross. The miracles of Jesus Christ, the greatest miracle of Jesus Christ (laughs) was not when he turned the water into wine or multiplied the bread, walked on water. The greatest miracle of Jesus Christ will be when he splits that sky and he comes back to finish what he started. And in order to meet him where I need to meet him, I've got to be found with my cross in my hand. Amen. I want you to close your eyes with me right now. We're going to stop right here. Jesus by the authority and the power of the name that is above them all, I pray over every man and every woman and every student and every child under the sound of my voice, whether it is on this Wednesday night or uh, whether somebody uh, finds us on on an archive stream, that, that whenever and however this meets them where they are, that they will feel the the impact of the necessity to carry that cross, that they will not be ashamed, that they will not be afraid to take that, to deny oneself and to follow. I don't just want change in my life. I don't want just simple behavior modifications. I want my belief systems. Uh, Those things, uh, oh, that I can deny myself is going to take belief systems. Uh, Carrying my cross is going to take belief systems change. 
going back to a prayer closet when nothing has happened is going to take transformation because I'd quit along the way if it was just simple change. Oh, no, it's not just about simple change. I have been transformed by the renewing of my mind. I'm going to keep the faith. I'm going to keep the word at the forefront. I am not. Oh, God, I'm not uh, going to to, to fall along the wayside. Absolutely not. Uh, My mind has been made up because you, Lord, by your grace, it's been sufficient. It always has been and it always will be. And I thank you, Jesus. The days ahead, we're coming closer to you. We're going to stay yoked. We're thanking you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless each and every one of you. Again, forgive us uh, just kind of out of our hands here, some technical difficulties uh, with some of the computer system. I I do appreciate our uh, production team. I want to give them a shout out and tell them how thankful I am uh, for them. They they are very devoted and a very difficult thing to do what they're doing, and I appreciate it's a great ministry, and thank you for uh, trying to do your best to help us do our best. So uh, they are a, 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 just a, a, a essential uh, ministry of this church. So thank you very much, gentlemen. Um, and for those that serve on the weekend as well, you guys are fantastic. So God bless you. Speaking of the weekend, we are looking forward to... They gave me a thumbs up back there. They're, they're pretty excited. Um, but... Um, We're looking forward to seeing you back here on Sunday morning. Praise God. Uh, If you are unable to make it or feel at risk, um, then we welcome you to stay home. This is why we're doing our best to serve you online as well. And we're going to stay. We're going to stay committed, stay connected. That's uh, just a promise here at the church today. Amen. So we'll be back here 10 o'clock on Sunday morning. Uh, doing our best to start as promptly as we can. Amen. Uh, if you uh, are looking for ways to give, uh, there are directions in the comment section below. You can see that. Thank you uh, for staying faithful in that. Very, very important. Uh, our church is doing our best, and although we are not able to operate out of here as much as we would like, uh, we still appreciate the building that we feel like is a miracle. And we want to do our best to make the upkeep to it and to keep this thing rocking out. So God bless you. We love you. We're looking forward to see you again on Sunday. I'll end it the way that Mr. Felix ends it with four words. And those four words are these. Hey, you matter. God bless you. We'll see you on Sunday.